I'm Leanna Lowenstein, Child and Family Therapist in Toronto, Canada, and I'm thrilled to have one of Canada's foremost play therapists, Teresa Fraser, uh, who is going to demonstrate an amazing technique uh, that facilitates uh, talking about safety with clients. Teresa Fraser is a play therapist and play therapist supervisor um, in Toronto uh, who has a wealth of experience and many talents. Um, and I'm just thrilled that you've agreed to be here today. So I'm going to move out of the way and let you uh, take it away, Teresa. Thank you so much, Leanna. Hello, everyone. So as Leanna introduced an intervention um, that is mine, but I suspect that many therapists are already using this uh, intervention, both using sand tray and creative materials and drawing. And in, I find it really helpful when I'm using EMDR as an intervention because you start with safe place. And I also find it very helpful when I'm doing directive work with adolescents and adults. Uh, and I have also done this with, with uh, little people about eight years and up. And essentially what I ask them to do when they come after we've done an intake session and we're really clear on the purpose of coming to therapy and what we're going to be working on in terms of goals, uh, we then start to talk about safety. And relational safety takes more than one session to create as we all know. It's going to take, it takes time over sessions, but it's really helpful I think for the folks that come to see us to have some concrete thoughts around what is safety for me. So it's a very cognitive way to ask, to have them to be mindful and be in tune with what are the aspects of their life or experiences they've had that help them to feel safe. And sometimes after, after creating the sand tray, uh, teenagers will say, you know, I never really realized that that was a resiliency factor. Well, they don't use the word resiliency. I use the word resiliency, but they'll say, I never really realized that that was something that I go to when I'm not feeling comfortable or unsafe, or it's something I can go back to to feel better. So what the directions that I give are pretty simple. It's please use anything in the room, and if you can't find something that you're looking for, you can let me know, and maybe we can create it together with art materials, or please use these art materials and let's draw what a safe place would be for you. Sometimes um, the individual has a hard time getting started, so I may need to say if you know if you can't think of something that has been safe, what would be something that you would want that would help you to feel safe? So before Leanne and I started today, I looked at her wonderful collection of miniatures that has a good variety of people and animals and vegetation and structures representing um, different generations and different cultures, which is always really important because we don't know when we're working with kids of different cultures what items might be representative of safety for them. And I picked some that felt safe for me. Uh, one that jumped out was a, a church, and that could be a faith community. Um, another was um, an image that I also have in my collection, which is a pregnant mama with a baby in utero. A treasure box. There's one here of, uh, it looks like, uh, maybe it's a dad. It could be a mom. It depends on your perspective. With a little person carrying the little person on her on their hip, and then here's one with a dad helping um, his little girl to ride the bike for the first time. So I would invite the person to um, build a world that was uh, that represented safety or include items that feel safe for them. And then we would just go around and talk. I wouldn't necessarily say, take, let's take a tour. I might instead say, can we look at each of the items that have shown up in this world and let's have a conversation about why they connect with the word safety for you. And we would go through all of the items. And then if I see themes in the items, like perhaps maybe there's a lot of faith-based items, or maybe there's a lot of mother-child or parent-child or adult-child items, or maybe there's no adults in the sand tray, and instead there's um, images like a treasure box, which I've had some youth say, this is safe for me because I can put my innermost thoughts and the parts of me that I'm not sure I'm ready to show people, but I know they're safe here, and no one can take them from me, and I don't need to talk about them or show them until I'm prepared to show them. Um, I've picked many items that, that 
folks might identify as being attachment items. And for some of the youth we work with, we know they can't pick those items because maybe they haven't had really positive experiences with their caregivers or the multiple caregivers that they've had. So uh, we would look at themes. We would look at the themes that maybe perhaps aren't there. And then I would be reflecting on, you know, how are these themes represented in your life right now? And if the individual can't identify that, then we talk about what are perhaps ways we can get those items or people or experiences back in your life. Because as we go through the therapeutic process, there may be times when we need to go back to what is feeling safe. And if the person, if you don't have experience with Santre, you can do this activity with a drawing and then I would encourage you to take pictures of the drawing and give the drawing to the person. Sometimes I'll laminate it and ask them to keep it with them. So if they we're doing CBT for example and going on buses is a hard thing but it's something they have to do in their daily life, I'll encourage them to take their drawing with them as a transitional object and to refer back to it. So that's, I, I encourage you to give it a try on yourself first and perhaps use it with other colleagues or supervisees and just get it, get, take the opportunity to ask some wondering, curious questions because it does give you an opportunity to get to know the person better and them to gain an understanding of what them, helps them feel better when they're discussing or processing issues that are, is the hard stuff and the reason they came to therapy in the first place. And then when we look at termination, it's really nice to go back and say, would you now add any other items for safety? Or can we do a closing safety tray and see what shows up there? So thank you for your time.